everyone, how you all doing? I just got back from my first anime comic convention, and that was a whole experience, huh? As it turns out, there are a boatload of people in Artist Alley using some anime influence in their art and selling it as uh, fan arts or original work. And of course, I was there also selling my somewhat manga-influenced original works. And it got me thinking about this somewhat old article. Don't know if any of you have seen this before, but it's titled Must Read Can You Make a Living Creating Manga in North America? Now, as I mentioned before, it's a very old article. This is all the way back from 2012. And when I first read it, it came off to me as somewhat bitter, <laughs> somewhat of a biased perspective from someone who didn't really do as well as they wanted to with their series. But I wanted to kind of go back to this article today to look at some of the points they make when they say that it's uh, not possible to make a living creating manga and see how, how true it is today, if anything's changed or if anything's gotten better. Because I do know that there are some biases when it comes to comics done in a manga style but not done from Japan or from someone who is Japanese, and they do kind of discuss it a bit in this article. And just by looking at it, I can point out a few reasons why this doesn't work as well. I mean, art style wise, this strikes me as very like early 2000s America's version of manga, you know? It's not exactly a natural looking style. It looks like you're kind of forcing it to, to look Japanese. And you could throw that criticism towards a lot of uh, new manga style coming out today, obviously. But this one looks very distinctly from a certain time period. I've never heard people use the term OEL manga either. I know that that is technically like the correct term to use when it comes to English made manga, but I've never heard anyone use that term because it's such a terrible term. It just doesn't roll off the tongue at all. It doesn't sound flattering at all. Like, you got manga and then you have manhua, the French manga. People sometimes refer to it as manfra. And it's kind of like, okay, I can see the evolution here. I can see how it's all semi-connected while also having um, something that distinguishes it between each country. Okay. OEL manga? It sounds like shit. I'd rather it be called Mon America. It's, it's like equally stupid, but at least it rolls off the tongue better. Smaller pie equals fewer slices. Compared to Japan, fewer people per capita purchase and read comics on a regular basis. Thus, the North American comics publishing industry is much, much smaller generates much less money. That is an interesting perspective. I will say the community of people who buy manga in Japan is very strong. Not only because there's so many of them, but because they're such loyal customers. Like they always come back to buy more and they all, they're buying all of the merchandise. Even if they've only vaguely heard of the character, they're gonna have a plushie of that character, you know? And a lot of that has to do with uh, sometimes just the design being <laughs> very good. But yes, I, I will somewhat agree with this. Because in Japan, they make manga for everybody, every age group, every type of person. You can find a manga about practically anything. And I think that's how it appeals to so many people. The way that they do it may be a bit shady because they're kind of just pumping out whatever they can. Quantity is not always equal to quality, mind you. But I will somewhat agree with a little asterisk next to this that yes, in Japan, there is a lot more of an audience, uh, a lot more of a spread shot audience, I will say. But also keep in mind that uh, not every country speaks Japanese. But then you get like the English language, right? Multiple countries speak English. And America, even, even if you just keep it in the country type sales, America has much more people than Japan does. So like even if there's a smaller percentage, if you actually count up the heads, 
it's still a lot of people that could be your potential customers. So it's like I somewhat agree, but with a little with a little asterisks, not always 100% true. Want to be published in a manga magazine? Dream on. Unlike Japan, there are few North American anthology magazines that feature up and coming comic creators. That is true. The one that I know would just be like previews from Diamond, the magazine that's for the most part just made for comic shops who are looking for comics to sell. But I don't know many other magazines out there that will actually give you a preview or a, a chapter of a new comic that's coming out or indie comic creators that are trying to get their work out there. I do think that we could benefit from having more magazines like that. There used to be more magazines like that. There used to be like gaming magazines also, but now it kind of feels like those have dwindled away. Even with the absence of those magazines though, it's not 100% impossible for you to get your work out there because we have the internet. And like I said, you know, this was this article was written in 2012. Maybe it wasn't as prevalent back then as it is now, but yes, most people, most creators are getting their work out there and getting noticed by social media uh, and getting their fans to spread out their work and share their work. Not that I think it's a bad idea to have any anthology magazines showing new comics or previews from indie creators. I think that would be am amazing. I would buy those magazines, but it's not needed to get people's work out there. And I don't think that it would really affect the industry to such a degree, whether or not we have those magazines. But then again, Japan is doing much better and has a much wider audience, so who knows? American manga readers tend to snub slash ignore fake manga. This includes the artist's alley scene at many anime cons where pinups and buttons featuring fan art of Japanese manga characters outsell original comic stories and characters. Yes, fan art will always sell more at the artist alley and at the conventions. That doesn't really have anything to do with the fact that people are snubbing fake manga though. That's more so because people will flock to things that they recognize. In fact, a lot of people go to those conventions to buy merchandise of uh, anime or manga that they like. If you're a new upcoming creator, it's not that people don't want to support your work. It's just that people aren't always going to those conventions to get something new to read. A lot of the time they're going to those conventions for stuff that they're already fans of. Even those uh, booths with tons of comics, just boxes and boxes, they're selling back issues a lot of the time. They're selling to collectors even those are just trying to sell to people who are already fans of those works. So I wouldn't really connect those two. I think those are two separate problems. As far as American manga readers snubbing fake manga, seeing people who are creating something that is inspired from anime and manga, using that similar style or maybe even using the similar format, maybe even calling it manga flat out. Yeah, people can be very particular about that. They can be very protective. There's the crowd of people People who refuse to call anything not from Japan manga. No matter what style it's done, no matter what it's inspired by, it's all comics. It's just like the umbrella term for everything. And I do think there should be some distinction because it is different. It is trying to hit different audiences. I mean, people think of American comics, they're thinking of the superhero issues. They're not thinking about something done in in a manga style format. So it, it is a shame that there's no real distinction. You know, people don't say global manga, people don't say OEL manga. They just put everything under the comics basket. And they will get upset if you introduce your work as manga, if you are not 
Japanese or from Japan, which is、uh, a bit of a pain. I've been in that mindset where I look at people mimicking manga and I've been turned off by it myself, and I've seen other people turned off by it also. Even though there are like a crowd of people who say, you know, it doesn't matter. What style you do it in? It just matters, like how good it looks. It just matters what the story is. In some cases, yes, that is true. But there are also crowds of people who just assume all fake manga is bad, and part of that has to do with a lot of manga-style comics that were released in those early 2000s actually just being awful, awfully drawn, and. Awfully written. I think also people feel as though they're being tricked when American comic creators introduce their work as being manga because of the assumption that all manga comes from Japan. They continue on to say one of Tokyo Pop's greatest sins is creating an asshole generation of readers obsessed with authenticity, hatefully pointing out fake manga. There is an audience for work influenced by manga and Japan. It was at TCAF this weekend. We just gotta ignore the haters and the press. I recently spoke to a high school class who asked me how they could break into the, the industry. I asked them how many manga they bought by American artists, and they told me none. But they didn't see the connection. A frequently heard complaint from pros in the comics publishing business. Is how many portfolios and proposals cross their desk from aspiring manga creators who simply lack the skill, polish, and experience to produce professional-level work. Whether it's a lack of basic drawing skills, sloppy paneling and pacing, or lackluster storytelling, or a combination of these things, many novice creators, even ones that have completed four years of art school, seem ill-equipped to make their dreams of a career in comics. Into a paying reality. It is a little bit difficult because a lot of people who are doing manga-style stuff here in America, they're basically self-taught. There's not really mentorships you can take. There's not many people that are doing it in that style. Maybe part of it is because that bias against the style, or maybe part of it is because American comics usually have. Their own superhero style, but even if you go to an art school specifically for comics, they're kind of, for the most part, teach you how to draw comics the American style way or the Marvel way. And then when you transition to trying doing something that's more manga inspired, you're not really going to have a lot of experience drawing in that style. I wouldn't go as far to say that there are no people in America that can draw anime or manga. Obviously, not true. Some of them really just haven't found their way into the industry yet. From what I've heard, the company Tokyo Pop. Has never made back their investment from publishing original stories. This is possibly why Tokyo Pop is holding on to the rights to these series. It's money they may be hoping to recoup someday with movie or other publishing deals. Even though Tokyo Pop shuttered their North American publishing operations in June 2011, referring to、uh, the idea of manga publishers also publishing. OEL manga or you know English-made manga-style comics, they are still doing that. They don't separate them, so chances are you didn't really even notice manga that you've read from Viz or Tokyo Pop actually came from Japan or from America. Sometimes I notice. Sometimes it's very obvious that what they're adapting is actually a web comic or webtoon. And they're just putting it in manga format, and some people might look at that and still feel like they're being tricked. But like I said, some people don't even notice that, that what they're reading is actually outside of Japan and just being promoted as being manga. Very rarely do I hear people recognize that Radiant is a French manga. There are also international manga contests that a lot of people enter. And they will. A lot of the prizes for those contests will be to be published in Shonen Magazine, 
And in some cases, some very rare cases, they give you some sort of a uh, manga publishing deal. Uh, let's see, it's also noted that the dream of moving to Japan to make manga is impossible unless you speak Japanese. And even then, there's so much homegrown talent you really need the ultimate in perseverance to break through. I still think people are happy to support and buy stuff related to properties they really like. We just have to be that good. And then that's kind of just where the article ends. So it is a very interesting article, even if, you know, not everything kind of holds up today in this article, because it is an older article. And like I said, it's a little bit bitter, a little bit uh, spiteful. I do see in today's age, modern creators, very inspired by manga and anime, and they're actually doing fairly well. They're actually managing to find their audiences. Obviously, some YouTubers who are making the OEL manga, Brandon Chen, he's, you know, a writer, but he's partnering up with multiple artists to make some webtoons at some point, sometimes submissions for these manga competitions. A lot of people might point to DD Mark, who's also like doing similar stuff. And I look at those people and I see a lot of passion put behind some of their work. And it looks like it's paying off for the most part. So it's not that I think that it's impossible. And it's not that I think that the bias of weaves is gonna hold you down when it comes to creating anime style stuff. Obviously, you know, my own experience going to a con, there are definitely some people who looked at how I had um, some original stuff that was obviously anime inspired. They look at it and they give me the stink eye. Or some people come up to my table and they're like, do you have anything Sailor Moon? <laughs> and I'm like, no, everything on my table is original stuff. It's, it's my characters. And they're like, oh. <laughs> then in some cases, people aren't really open to taking in new content or new content that's not coming from Japan because a lot of people see it as a, maybe a filter for good content. If it came from Japan, it's good. If it came from here, it's probably bad. It's probably political. But yeah, I do hope that things change for the better. I'm not against American creators taking the manga format or the anime style for their own stuff. And I think uh, the best example of someone doing that would probably be Common America, which is a very popular series now that utilizes that anime style for the parody superheroine herself. Being an American myself, obviously I want to, I actually want to support local creators or at least local to the country. I'm not against supporting creators from Japan, obviously, but I don't want to have a bias against my own neighbors here, you know? I want us all to do well, because that's how indie creators kind of push each other up. Let me know what you think about this whole discussion down below in the comments section. What do you think about people who make manga style comics here in America or in the English language in general? If you'd like to go check out my own comics, you can check them out on burningstarcomics.net. And if you'd like to see sneak peeks of future comics coming out, go check out the fan club on Subscribestar. Thank you guys for watching. Leave your like, subscribe. I'll see you next time. Till then, bye!